This is Modern Homesteading. So you can see here, just a quick function, how the, fun how the Pacific Coast uh, handle works is you've got a, a machined piece here with a groove cut in it and a retained rivet, just like you have on your AR-15s, you know, so it won't fall out in the field when you need to take the handle off. It's been peened over on the end there, uh, so it won't come out. This hole just being a slightly bigger than this one here, so just a simple, clever way to do it. And then, of course, you can see the hand guard. A lot of you guys, uh, keen, the keen observers that you are, noticed that when I restored a Wanda and I put her back together, the handguard was in a reverse position than it was uh, from the time that I started. And that song, saw belonged to my grandfather, and when he had put it back together, he'd actually put the handle back, uh, or the handguard on backwards. And the reason why I know that is if you look and see there, there's a groove cut in it. See how that groove is lined up there? There's not a groove on the back side. Well, that groove is, is an essential component with the handle because as you install it here on the saw, that groove fits into the back, the back of the blade, fits in there. And that's what gives it its stability and strength. So right here you can see the advantage of the Pacific Coast handle because you could, if you needed to use this to cut down or to fell a tree, you could run your handle uh, in a vertical position and cut back and forth this way. Or, if you're bucking, you can simply move this over and line up the teeth, and then you have its, its traditional shape right there. So it just gives you every option, and you can have the handle up, you can have the handle down. Uh, it's no question uh, the way to go. So if I tighten that up there, you can see that that is going to be a great handle design uh, for Henrietta. You know, it just dawned on me that I have not uh, given a name uh, to this little saw, the little uh, bucking saw. Actually, you know, it could be a falling saw as well. It's got a little bit of a curve in it. But being it has two, ham two holes in it, that's usually the indicator that a two-hole saw with, will, ha will be a bucking saw. That's for you know, working this way and not for felling. So this saw is going to, be, it's going to need a name. So I would like uh, you guys uh, to help me choose a name for it. What I want to do is it's got to be something that starts with a P because this saw was given to me by uh, Patrick so something, but it's got to be a female's name so it's got maybe something like Patricia or Patty or something to that nature. So I'll tell you what, so give me the names that you think would be appropriate starting with a P uh, and if you could incorporate Patrick somehow would be perfect and I will choose uh, the best name, the one that I like the most and I'll give you a shout out uh, if you are the one that chooses it uh, in the next saw video. So it's settled. Henrietta is going to receive uh, and be wearing in the future a Pacific Coast style handle here. And here is what we're going to start with. But we cannot put this handle on in this condition on such a fine saw with so much history. So we are going to restore this uh, so it looks brand new, shiny and spanking new. I have heard back from lots of you guys that are restoring family heirloom vintage saws or you have found some at, at a garage sale or Craigslist and I've get a lot of question, been getting a lot of questions about that. Uh, one thing uh, that I want to share with you which with these handles when you're restoring them is take great care with them because they're irreplaceable and they're very expensive. So to find one that's original like this with the original wood and, and wing nut and all that it is unusual. The thing you want to be careful with uh, and the biggest problem you're going to run into are these wing nuts are going to be seized up. They're going to be frozen on here. So if you're going to sacrifice something, you do not want to sacrifice this piece because it's machined and it's got a quality rivet and it's difficult to replace. Not irreplaceable, but just difficult, especially for those that don't have access to machine shop and the proper tools to do it. So sacrifice the wing nut because you can find these um, easily. So if you put a little heat on it with a torch and it still is not coming off, take your hacksaw and take your time and very carefully cut it. Just keep cutting, don't, try not to cut into the threads, just watch it really carefully and get rid of that and just sacrifice that wing nut. Then you, we can get a, a die and chase those threads, clean them up, put a new wing nut on and you're set. But that's, that's the part you want to, if you can't get it off, that's what's got to go. 
many of you younger guys are just in the process of setting up your tools and acquiring the, the things that you're going to need uh, for, for, for a future shop. There's three essential tools apart from hand tools that I really think you need to have that I would not be able to live without. And the first one is going to be a bench, a vise. Um, no smaller than a six inch vise. Wilton, if you can get a Wilton brand, that's always uh, top tier. It's one of the very best. Um, some of the older Craftsman ones, there's lots of good vices. Just make sure you stay away from anything that's Harbor Freight or anything made in China, Mexico, Brazil. Make sure it's much better to get an older one that was made in America, Germany, uh, than, um, than the newer ones. The second, and I could argue back and forth which is more important, is going to be a small benchtop drill press or a bench grinder. When it comes to electric motors and bench grinders, Valdor is what you want. Don't buy Chinese, don't buy anything else uh, that's made overseas that's been done in the last 20 years or so. Get yourself something used. I bought this on eBay for $100 plus a little bit of shipping and this is an American made quality quality. So anything with Baldor's name on it is top tier. You're just not going to get any better. How you want it set up is you want a regular grinding wheel and you want a wire brush attachment. The wire wheel really is the perfect tool for restoring little tools and so many things. One thing you have to be careful with it is you definitely want to wear safety glasses with these because as it's spinning it'll throw little wires out and if you those will go right in your eye and you do not want that trust me. Uh, so wear your safety glasses with that and take your time but this is where we'll start. This is what's going to do the majority of the restoration for this uh, saw handle. Before and after. These threads are a little bit chewed up, so we'll chase those threads with a, uh, a die and clean those up. Before, after, before, after. When working with the smaller pieces, get yourself some vice grips or pliers and use that because it gets your hand, there, there's not enough surface area to hold on to and it gets your hand too close to the, to the wire wheel. Interesting, this little washer that this nut goes up against, it's got a leather insert in it. Interesting, not sure why.